Hi, I'm Chris. I'd like to welcome you to Faith Elements, and wow, I need a haircut. I'll be right back. There, that's better. You know, a friend of mine once asked me a fascinating question. He was trying to make changes in his life. He was, he was trying to move in a more positive direction. He was having issues with people who would hold his past against him. They saw him as he once was and not who he was trying to become. He was making strides towards becoming a better man, just doing those things in his life, you know, making those good decisions. But people would hold him to their residual image of him because of his past. And he asked me, what do I do about people who refuse to let me move on from my past? A few years ago, I was doing some work at a local Air Force base. I had been doing some civilian work that day, and I was finished up for the day and was heading home. And as I was leaving, I saw out on the flight line, I saw this beautiful F-16, and the sunlight was glistening off the canopy and off the fuselage. It was a beautiful sight, and I usually kept my camera with me while I was at work. So I got my camera out from behind the, the front seat where I kept it. I walked about the 50 yards or so down the fence line, and I framed up the shot. I stuck my lens through the fence, and I took the picture, and you know, I set up all my aperture settings and everything's ahead of time. And and when I looked at the picture in the in the little view window, it's I, I got the perfect picture the first time. So then I, I turned around, I walked the 50 or so yards back to my van, I got in, I leaned over and I put my camera back behind the driver's side seat. When I sat back up to get ready to leave, I saw flashing lights to my left. Two guards, without smiles I might add, were in a base police truck looking at me intently. I figured out pretty quickly they were not happy with what I had just done, so I got my camera back out. As they were putting the truck in park, I stepped out of my van with my camera in my hand. By this time, several other base police cars had showed up and pretty well had me surrounded. No one looked happy with me. I warmly greeted the two men who showed up first, who responded only by stepping to the back doors of their truck to retrieve their rifles. I decided at that moment I probably needed to turn my funny off and just answer their questions. They proceeded to ask me questions about what I was doing there and why I took the picture. I assured them that I had no idea that taking the picture of the jet was wrong and that I had clearance to be on the base and I told them what I was doing that day, which of course had nothing to do with photography. They had already radioed my plates in at that point and were talking to their dispatch via two-way radio during our conversation. The lead officer of course asked me if taking pictures of S-16s was part of my duties, to which I quickly responded no and I'll be glad to delete that picture. He and his partner proceeded with the good cop, bad cop routine and alternating blows. After a bit of this, the dispatch came back on the radio and informed them that the van I was driving was not stolen or anything. He then radioed them back, and get this, he said something that was just amazing. He said everything was okay, and that I was just a photographer. I said, uh, me? A photographer? Inside my mind, this, this honor of this, this compliment of the title he had bestowed upon me was just running through my head. And, uh, you know, they proceeded to grill me some more, you know, good cop and bad cop are going back and forth, and I'm not hearing hardly any of it because of the compliment he had paid me and the way he had identified me as a photographer. So, you know, I gladly told him I would give him my card, I just didn't want him to take my camera. So finally he let me delete the picture and go on my way, but he had paid me the compliment of calling me a photographer, and that was pretty cool indeed. As I drove away, the situation made me think of things with titles and how they are applied via actions observed. I was in a van with a company logo. The shirt and the name tag I on, had on were clearly identified me as working for the same company as the, the van logo was. But my identity was derived from my actions. Although it was quite clear what company I worked for, the simple act of taking a picture led the guard to identify me as a photographer. Jesus said, by their fruit, you will recognize them. It's not who we say we are or who we try to convince others that we are that matters. What identifies us is the manifestation of our inner being through our daily actions. In our daily acts, we find our true character. The trouble is, when we turn an otherwise non-Christian life into a new direction, it really is hard for those in our lives to truly accept the change. Our pursuit of Jesus sometimes gains us the label of Jesus freak, and we find ourselves relegated to the list of the insignificant. 
Some people will not let us move on from our past. When this happens, we are tempted to fulfill the identity that has been given to us, that has been recast on us by our own past. And some will say, well, if that's the way you see me, that's who I'm going to be. But we can read in 2 Corinthians that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The new has come, the old has gone. My challenge to you is don't let anyone tell you, because of your past, who you are. Don't let them tell you anything other than the true person that you are on the inside. Now, in case you're wondering how I answered my friend when he asked, you know, what do I do about people who refuse to let me move on from my past? I simply replied, prove them wrong. In the words of Jedi Master Yoda, old sins cast long shadows. But I would challenge you with the idea that shadows fade with time. Time is the passage through which change walks. We have no power to alter the past, but the future is wide open to those who will tamper with it. My prayer, Lord, make in me the creation that you desire so that my fruit will be a reflection of you, God, the Christ that I proclaim. Maybe that's not your prayer. Maybe your prayer is simply that you will be formed in the person that is on the inside trying to get out. Something to pray about, don't you think? Thanks for watching.